welcome back to the internet podcast. Today, we're talking about some controversial things while playing Lethal Company. We have Meat Man, a.k.a. Big C, in the house. What's up? What's up? We also have uh, the man who shall not be named. Hey, what's up, guys? And we're going to just uh, run it. We're just going to run it. Uh, I, my first big topic on this little board that I have set up is uh, going to be specifically the Morg Pie Twitch situation and um, a subtopic off of that that I have been wanting to talk about for a while. Um, so, if you guys don't know the gist of this situation, basically, no offense to Morg Pie whatsoever, but she's been banned five times on Twitch. Um, all for reasons that, honestly, she deserved. These reasons are basically she's been pushing the limits of Twitch as a whole. Uh, Moist Critical has a great video that goes in more depth than I could go on this podcast because it's like a 15-minute video. But uh, basically, she was the one who started the topless meta is what they call it where you just record yourself oh, naked yeah. except up like the chest up so you can't see anything so technically twitch won't ban you there's also the uh what's it called meta the sensor bar meta where they put sensor bars over their private parts so they don't get banned that way um basically there's a lot of things that are kind of blatantly uh wrong to do on twitch that she's been doing but uh she's been getting away with it which is i mean i guess get your money up not your funny up but uh is also terrible because twitch is a app that's used by children um but anyways i Quite wanted to talk too. about specifically her banning and why i think that her getting banned is another example of something that i've been wanting to talk about for a while that i'm not the first one that has pointed out um blatant sexism on twitch uh, i had to make sure that we were past the the two minute mark to get that one out there that's why i rambled on a little bit there but yeah um <laughs> if you guys don't know me i stream only on youtube and uh there's a very good reason for that and it's this is one of the reasons and so i've been wanting to talk about it for a while um but yeah that that's briefly the morgue pie uh, situation and how I feel about Twitch, but now let's get to my my lovely hosts and their opinion on these the affairs of Twitch at the current moment. Uh, we'll start yeah, with so um yeah oh oh enough with you want to start me yeah as a fellow yeah. YouTube yeah streamer. you know more about it than I do I I used to stream on Twitch you know it was about the same on YouTube you know I don't really got an opinion. But uh, you know they do they do some crazy things every every once in a while like uh, like like that, yeah. You know they they do they do. Uh... Oh, they do they do do. They uh, do do that. Um, yeah, they do that all the time. They do a lot of crazy things and wacky things. It's like a it's like a it's like a cartoon. You know they do some. It's a new adventure every every few months. You know, and uh, I can't really think of anything. Nothing comes to mind. But you know what I'm talking about. You know, you you probably can think well, they, of some things. Yeah, and we can They've we been can on ask the same adventure Cyril's, for a couple of years now. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of curious what uh, Cyril's opinion on it is because he is a viewer rather than a uh, a creator. More so. Yeah, well, so I, I mean, don't ever use... in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't ever use uh, Twitch. To be honest, I don't watch streams in general. I just watch uh, Brody's streams periodically, when I have time and he's streaming, and I turn on YouTube and he just happens to be streaming. But uh, which is I did. Always... <laughs> <laughs> I did during Prime Fortnite. I would watch an Ninja stream on Twitch, and I don't think there's any problem with like its setup or anything like that. Like it just seems pretty uh normal i guess in that aspect um i have seen the blatant rise of uh i wouldn't call it pornography but it's like it's like it's like they definitely like you said they definitely push the limits over it's, what it's is, like um, it's like teen allowed. rated and it's, teen rated corn yeah you know and, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more uh prevalent on twitch like because if, if that was stuff was on youtube i feel like most for the most of the time it's not as prevalent and also when you go on youtube it's like you know what you're getting into 
-hmm. Twitch has become very popular among like younger the younger generation. I feel like kids nowadays Twitch to them is what YouTube was when I was a kid. I think YouTube um, is still what, what it I is. Mean. It's just a little different. Well, I mean, even my little brother, I'll see him like he watches streams a lot, a lot more than I did when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. it's just interesting how that um, it's playing out to be like I see I hear kids talking about streamers and stuff and all sorts of like that. And so I know they see that content because the thing is, is when you open up Twitch, it shows these popular streamers like it shows the covers. It shows like, oh, oh, like, um, you know, like Amaranth is streaming right now. And it's, it's like blatant, like, you know, you, you like you can like get a little preview, I think, if you hover over it. And it's like, OK, like that's the stuff that's just right on the cover of the the, the page when you open it. I feel like that's not good mm -hmm. at all. Um, especially for the miners that are always on that platform. So, I mean, I guess we'll see how it folds out, but I don't think it's a good thing at all. And I think that Twitch should take, uh... Should be spearheading the, uh, opposition uh, away from that. They know what they're doing. I think they just want money. Yeah, I think it's... That, think, that's what I was talking to Nugwin about. <laughs> when we when I mentioned this topic, we were just like, yeah, Twitch, I think, just is fueled by money, and YouTube at least has a mission statement, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. And, and like, yeah, I think, and when, when Twitch was acquired by Amazon, I think that like changed things up a lot too. For sure. For I, sure. Well, I mean, even, have you seen it, uh, Twitch before Amazon before? Mm -mm, I did not. Uh, so, uh, what I, from what I, I have been told, Twitch. this is only what I've been told. I haven't done my own research on this, but. Ooh. You good? Uh, I almost died in the game. Um. Also, apparently, if you uh, are about to get killed by one of those brain-sucking guys, you should leave the base, and it will immediately get him off of you. Didn't know oh. that until just now. I panicked. But uh, I'm going to be patiently waiting in the ship. Anyways, uh, yeah, so YouTube has, has been owned by Google, and I think they have more experience with it to begin with. Um, but mm -hmm. anyways, uh, Amazon, when they before they acquired Twitch, I have been told that it was much more like Wild West youtube mentality and youtube has i mean i'm not gonna like YouTube, youtube youtube blatantly has full like naked bodies on the on the site mm -hmm. if you search it, for it, it you will find it find they, be. they are um, very hard to I find like now with, but with youtube it was just like regular like that was just like you like it, there was no regulations and that i'm assuming that's what you mean when you said wild west youtube yeah i mean but even now you can post a movie clips and like everybody knows the nair video that was a thing that happened and that's a big mm -hmm. thing that uh is an issue that is, that shouldn't be allowed that's that's uh i know that the idea behind it is that it's um you know it's it's educational content but it really it's it's gross and uh i wish they wouldn't show it because it, it always gets attracts an audience too um but yeah uh besides that speaking of other internet specific related dramas i made a video about Iraq. Um, I don't know if you guys had the chance to watch it, but it was a pretty well-performing video on my part. That doesn't really matter too much, but, uh, it, it matters because I got a lot of hate comments from that video, which is really? interesting. It's opposite of what I expected. So what I expected more so to happen is that from that video, people would realize, okay, Eric's been lying to this audience that he has. Are you guys, are, did you die, Cyril? Yeah, I did. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I thought that people were going to be like, oh, wow, I feel betrayed. Eric lied, whatever, etc. But instead, what it was is people saying, I don't care that he lied. I don't care that he lied, which that's crazy begs the question. Are people do people care about the authenticity of things anymore at all? And this is the guy we talked about last, last week, right? Who like said he traveled the world in December. Mm hmm. Do people care about the authenticity of YouTube anymore, though? Do they care if things are faked? Would they prefer that things are faked? Because sometimes they're more interesting. Um, and I honestly think after reading comments of that video that people don't. They don't care if they're real or fake anymore. They would rather see something fake that's interesting than something that is not and is, uh, you know, not mm, quite as that's interesting. interesting. That's interesting you say that, Brody. Because um, yeah. I have noticed that, like, and this is a separate field. The, okay, this is like, okay, actually, this is kind of a stretch, but I do want to say this. 
um, as I, I, I like watch a lot of music stuff, and um, mm -hmm. but in like there's a lot of um, as you guys have seen recently, like fake songs made with AI, right? And uh -huh. I've noticed an uproar of people. This is not like the average person, but there's quite a few people. Like you'd be surprised the number who don't care that it's AI. Like they're like, I, I want to put this in my playlist. Like I want to listen to this regularly. Like they just they don't care at all. And I think and I thought that was so insane because I was like, that, it's not real. Like right? Like it's not actually it's not, made by this person or whatever it's not made by an artist of and anything. uh right and so <clears throat> i thought that that would be like a huge like turn away for most people but some people just don't care and i feel like that's a similar scenario it's like some people oh i think another is like some people know that a lot of that content's already faked and to them it's just like okay it's just another instance mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean look at yeah. tiktok dude like have you seen how many tiktoks are faked like yeah. if you if you look many of them don't get caught but like some of them are like obvious some of them aren't as obvious and it's like oh it's like i've seen the same girl on your page like in this video you recorded that's like she's a random stranger she showed up again in your video from like a month ago like i've seen people see that stuff and i was like that's crazy like that they caught on that and and it just goes to show that like i don't i don't think you're right i think a lot of people don't care yeah because they're expecting it's unfortunate because it. uh, uh, I, mean, I, I mean that's the the whole premise that um my content was actually built upon my uh, my live streaming content specifically is my idea was if i live stream challenges from start to finish no one on planet earth can say that they are fake because they saw the first mm -hmm. part and they saw the end part they have saw everything in between it, there's no cuts there's no edits there's a recap after the stream after it happens oh. but other than that oh. there's nothing was you. Which uh, was kind of my uh, my idea, but uh, with that in mind, is does that even matter? Would it would it just have made me more successful if I just faked content for a year instead of doing the live streaming? Um, yeah. I think I think it definitely could have made you more successful. I think that wouldn't be as a uh, cool. It wouldn't be as fulfilling. <laughs> wouldn't be as fulfilling. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it would remotely. be as cool. Like for someone who cares about that kind of stuff, for me, I would not want to watch your content as much. If you if it was fake, um, that's actually yeah. one of the parts I like about it is that your challenges are real. And yeah, I mean, um, I, mean but I think you could have been the, more successful that way. At the at the end of the day, though, it it is all just uh, all these things are just meant to enter be entertaining. And I guess what the general audience, what general audiences are seeking out, uh, especially on YouTube, since most of those general audiences are so young, they don't really care about that stuff because you know, I mean, yeah, I I it's, think it's hard to put into words, but. You probably you probably could understand why uh, younger people wouldn't find that as uh, wouldn't care as much about that. What I believe truthfully, um, after this entire debate, is that though people do not care about authenticity in the short term, they care about it in the long term. And the creators such as Mr. Beast that are gonna have l longevity and people will talk about forever doesn't fake his content. So ultimately. Though Eric, in this example, though he's not fully faking his content, um, does fake aspects of his content, he's not going to have the same longevity as someone like Mr. Beast. That's true. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's, that's there's a reason why the longevity those of it. Are so much. Well, and, and how prevalent they are even now. It's like people like Mr. Beast are a lot more prevalent. People who are, who for real do their challenges. Um, I forgot his one name. Uh, oh, I think it's Ryan Trahan. Oh yeah, his like, stuff that's is all guy, real. Like, that's content for real, and it's like yeah, and it's like a lot more entertaining to watch. Agreed. I agree. <laughs> I, I too. agree. And and you would also see that he's a lot bigger than um like these other people who are faking their content. It's like people who want a quick ticket to fame are the ones faking their content. Yeah. And the people who have a passion for it are the ones who are taking it serious. Well, I would say I wouldn't say that Eric doesn't have a passion for it. it this is just our our current example. I, I want to say right now, I, I actually am a fan of Eric, and 99% of his stuff is real. He was just caught in a lie to specifically to promote monetization, which I'm sure is not only his fault. I would imagine that to that same order, he probably had people around him that wanted him to do this as well, not just himself. And I think this is just one aspect, and ultimately his content is fine. Um, I, I did want to say that real fast because I do love Eric. I think he's awesome. I really do think he's awesome other than this one thing that he's gotten caught on. Um, but yeah, I think that 
Uh, and ultimately, if you're faking things, you won't have longevity, and eventually it'll all come back to bite you. Is a good yeah. takeaway from that. Mm -hmm. Um, and the next big thing I have to talk about real fast is something that only people that like anime are gonna care about, other than me. And um, or it, so uh, if you don't care about anime, you can go ahead and skip um, about two minutes in the future. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen season two finale was a great, great video. I'm just being so serious. Oh, what the? Uh, what that? My uh, bad, y'all. So Jujutsu Kaisen has been setting up these giant plot points since the very beginning of the show. And a lot of those were seen and um, were able to be executed on, which was so cool. I loved that. I love the show. I love the anime. There was a, a ton of depth that season two added that I saw in the manga, but I didn't see in the anime yet, and I didn't know how they were going to do it. And they did it, and they did it amazingly, and uh, that's me done glazing Jujutsu Kaisen for now. <laughs> um, I, I um, Did you get it all out? Yeah, I also didn't spoil anything too, so that's good. Good, Jump. yeah, I... let's go. Sorry. Uh, anyways, I've, I've heard like, um, oh, okay. Oh no, you're good. You're good. You got it. You got it. You got it. I I don't I don't watch Jujutsu Kaisen, but I've heard nonstop stuff about it. So I I actually am really interested in checking it out because I know it's a very popular anime right now. You absolutely anyways, should. Yeah. I I know. I also will also say, if you watch the first couple episodes and you're confused. <clears throat> insanely confused um that's okay um that is kind of supposed to happen oh okay um because because for the man. first couple episodes you'll probably be confused and be like what the heck there's no plot to this at all uh it's just people like dying and stuff <laughs> and then uh you'll understand in the end so just Bad. don't don't be turned off of it it, it's it definitely okay. like all animes falls into the just watch the first episode then it gets good type thing well, Brody, mm. I don't okay, watch it for the plot. Okay, not good. Okay, not good. What? Uh, that, what do you watch it for, mind. buddy? What do you watch it for? Uh, huh? Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see when I watch it. If I watch it ever, you know, I might get around <laughs> to it. I fell. I fell by the Yo, way. Yo, I found uh, a gift. Oh no! You can open that. Oh, and a Rubik's cube. Uh, but anyways. yeah, I opened it. I got a bottle. Yeah, so that was a great. That was great. That. W it was a great season two finale. Um, next topic will be, uh, this is a big thing for America and American politics, but I do not like to talk about politics f most of the time. So I will not uh, stray on this. Um, recently, a certain candidate that I will not name, you guys all know who he was. Um, he was, he was a past president, was removed from the ballot in a certain state named Colorado. <laughs> and, uh, there was a lot of civil unrest amongst a lot just of no right-leaning people. Um, and I just wanted to say that even though American politics can be scary, just ultimately trust in God, trust that this country is going to make it through it, and we'll make it through it. That was a positive little thing on the polit political debate type thing. I'm not going to politically debate anybody because I don't like talking about politics online. Um, but yeah, that's valid. Yeah. Uh, and then there's one more big thing that me and Nuckwit have researched all day, and that is the Coffee Villa, Coffee Villa, Coffee Coffeezilla, Villa. um, <laughs> revolt situation, Misfits revolt, Ryan P, um, situation. So Coffeezilla. Yeah. For those that don't know, Coffeezilla is a large creator that exposes scams, fraud things such of that nature. Um, and he recently did an expose on a couple of big creators that got scammed by one individual named Ryan P. Uh, yeah. I use scam as if like he, that he took their money basically and he lied yeah. to them about certain things. And he also took money from common people as well, not just creators. So uh, he runs a, comp a, a a creator thing named um, Misfits. I'm sure everybody's he's their, heard he's of their, that. Uh, man manager. Uh, he's the man Misfit, uh, Misfits manager. If you don't know who the Misfits are, they're a small. They're they're a large group of uh, 
like uh, creators you might have heard of a few of them uh fits swagger souls other ones i don't know i just mainly know fits and swagger because i'm but me as well yeah, he's the manager of that group uh, yeah, it's it's a very interesting content organization, and I will also say they have nothing to do with this this drama. They are not involved in this drama. It is just Ryan P specifically who owns their company and manages their company. Yeah. Um, so do well, it, it's you? he basically the first part. I think we have enough right here in our hands to us. Uh, if we just sell that, we can keep the rest for the next quota. But anyways, yep. um, yeah. So he. First things first, he talked about his specific fraud, fraudulent activities. And those fraudulent activities are basically him. Nuck died. Oh, wait, was that Nuck or you? Oh, that was Zero. Uh, zero. Uh, great. This guy. <laughs> uh, anyways, he basically um, to took a bunch of money apart. from uh, creators. These creators are such as Mr. Beast. Uh, Anthony Padilla those are the names that I first off recognized but I know that there's also many others there's those are the ones that he name drops in there he has worked yeah. with a lot of youtubers a lot of these youtubers preferred to stay anonymous and not talk about it which coffeezilla outlines in the video and um, I honestly just think that a lot of this stuff is just sad for the most part he's gonna die most of this stuff is just simply sad uh, he took I, I should probably just blatantly explain the uh, controversy now that i've explained everybody who's involved um so basically what happened is this ryan p individual owns a t-shirt company this t-shirt company basically makes their money by selling t-shirts dealing with all of the factory stuff so youtubers can focus on being youtubers which is a good comp concept uh, really it's a great concept the yeah. only issue comes is when Ryan P, the owner of this Revolt t-shirt company, is what it's called, Revolt, um, basically runs at a loss. So they buy the uh, the t-shirts with uh, their original credit line, sell the t-shirts, and then they keep the money. The, for the next creator, they then sell the t-shirts and pay the first creator. Very fraudulent <laughs> activities. Um, it definitely relies on the next creator making more money than the first. Which is uh, kind of, I mean, a lot of people have said it's a scam, and I would pretty much argue that like it is a scam. It is definitely a scam. Um, and basically, this screwed over a bunch of creators. On top of that, there's also many reports of customers not get, oh yeah, Valkyrie and Corpse Husband are a big thing. I'm sorry, I, I meant to uh, mention them earlier, but uh, they were also people. But uh, anyways, he, uh, he takes this, these shirts and doesn't send them out and doesn't pay the warehouse so since he didn't pay the warehouse and didn't send them out the people that paid for the shirts and they made the shirts for are not getting the shirts not shipping the shirts not receiving the shirts not anything they paid for it they paid for shipping they paid for everything and yet this guy pocketed it and spent it on whatever he wanted to messed up but as coffeezilla That's increases illegal. very illegal and fraudulent yeah um and as coffeezilla continues to talk about this ryan p also has a bunch of people that come up against him with sexual assault allegations. Um, yeah. So hey, I don't want to get super into that because ultimately accusations are accusations and we have no way to prove them other than word of mouth versus word of mouth. And that is a sad thing to deal with in my brain because I wish I could just blatantly say you are wrong and you are in the wrong and you are right and you are in the right. Like ultimately, if you've been abused, you are in the right regardless of the situation but it's hard to determine whether you are abused or not now because of how many people will just blatantly accuse people now and i feel bad because i don't want to jump yeah. on this train that is against ryan p and he might have made some financial decisions but he might be a, a guy good guy other than that and i hate to just beat him while he's down but uh if he is really doing this this he's a scum he is scum he's a bad guy he's not a good person whatsoever and he deserves what's coming to him. But um, if he, mm -hmm. if not, I hope that he has, a, he's hopefully deals with this situation and everybody who has been wronged, he repays. Um, yeah, that, that's about all I have on my opinion on that. Uh, if Nuckwit would like to go and touch up on some things that I missed or his own opinion, I'd love that as well. 
Oh no, you you got almost everything. But uh, you know, I I share the same opinion. You know, they're they're allegations at the end of the day. So I, per, I personally just don't feel like I am any in any way entitled to talk about that side of it. It is messed up, but you know, and there's no there, there's got to be more. Uh, other more professional or people can handle that. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's disgusting. As for like the scamming though. You know, it's 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 crazy. You know, the Miss uh, Misfits is a big group. You know, they they got a they get a and he's like their their manager. He's the one responsible for like uh, keeping it all together. So it's kind of it's kind of crazy with uh, all the stuff that's been being said. How it, it it's all going down behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, no matter how you look at this situation, it's rough. Worst or uh, best case scenario, he's just a fraudulent dude, and um, he figures out a way to pay back all of his victims. Wor uh, <laughs> worst case scenario, he's a terrible person, and he deserves to go to jail and rot for a long, long, long time. Um, uh, it it's rough, and it it's all rough, I think, and that's... I think that's all there is to say about this situation until more things arise. Yeah. Um, we're going to end this off on a, a great note, and we're going to just absolutely dookie on Aquaman because it, the movie apparently sucks. And the reason why I say we're going to dookie on it is because um, ultimately uh, I didn't even watch the movie. And the reason why I didn't watch the movie is because the movie did not seem worth watching because I didn't see any marketing material for it. I I didn't know it was even out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I can yeah. So uh, yeah. It, it got what well, it sucks because uh, they they kind of didn't have they put Warner Bros has been doing this thing uh, recently where they've kind of been putting no faith into their movies. Uh, there was the whole Batgirl situation that happened a while back where uh, a basically finished film uh, just got put on the shelf and, and it'll never see the light of day, at least anytime soon, mm -hmm. which uh, sucks. And it's it's the same sort of situation here. This is the uh, last movie in the uh, DCEU, as they uh, as it's called. And it, uh, it's, it, that's, it's the last movie in that canon universe before uh, yeah. it gets officially reset with uh james gunn's new uh dc universe that Which he's I'm excited off for with, uh superman super excited uh, for yeah. that actually it's it, it's it's a shame though i, I don't want to dog on the movie you know it probably does have its problems i haven't seen it um everything i've I seen says did see terrible. i did see the flash well you know opinions differ and uh i did see the flash i am personally not a fan of it and i can see that not many people were um, but you know, it's, it's still unfortunate. I, I feel like, uh, even with the controversy surrounding this movie, like with Amber Heard and all that, i I feel like it deserved, it at least deserved some more marketing, uh, especially with, uh, it didn't get any like red carpet event, no press, nothing like that, which apparently, uh, in the whole Hollywood thing is, is a big deal for a movie not to get any of that, especially for a big superhero movie with, uh, mm -hmm. with a title such as Aquaman, you know? just it's it's a bit it's a bit sad to see it's uh i don't think uh i i, I don't think it deserved bad good or bad i don't think it deserved to be uh treated the way it did because there were people that actually did put effort into that movie Absolutely. and uh you know i i i did i i personally did like uh, jason momoa as uh aquaman i oh, in the great. movies i did see him in and you know it's it's sort of sad that that's how it, he goes out same with uh, a lot of the other actors, you know. Uh, I think uh, most of the other Justice League actors, like uh, Henry Cavill, you know, it's it's sad because uh, they 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 sort of had tragic endings with uh, all of their uh, roles. Mm -hmm. That's that's really all I had to say about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess hopefully the new DCEU is awesome and James Gunn does a great job, just like he did on Guardians of the Galaxy, because we're gonna need that level of performance. To make this worth watching uh, with that i don't have any more topics we've uh, yapped our whole way through um i st stream other than this on fridays and sundays every week and uh knuckwit streams as well 
Cyril is working hard on this album. He's getting it out by uh, February. Anything else to add? March, actually. March. March. My fault. My fault. No, you're good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. All right. Well, everybody, have a great day. Um, play some Lethal Company with your family. It is the first of 2024. Have an awesome day. See you, B-dubs and knuckwits and uh, sisms later.